Good evening, I'm Dr. Akl. I'm a practicing physician in Flint. Uh, I'm a cancer treating doctor. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about thyroid cancer. Thyroid cancer is a well-behaving cancer <coughs> that is uh, referred to papillary and follicular cancer. And a plastic thyroid cancer is a bad cancer and I'm not talking about it today. I'll talk about it in different topics. But for papillary and follicular thyroid cancer is well behaving cancers. Uh, the outcome is excellent. Most important predictor of outcome is age. Younger patients do well. Uh, less than 40, they do very well. And uh, as a matter of fact, this cancer, when it occurs in younger patients, their chance of control or their cure rate or their life expectancy is similar to parallel control, meaning their chance of living a normal life as if they never had this cancer. This is based on many studies. One of them, the Canadian uh, big studies by Dr. Simpson. Papillary thyroid cancer uh, is diagnosed. Patient feel a lump confirmed with ultrasound and uh, biopsy uh, confirm the diagnosis. Surgery is done. After surgery, the thyroid is ablated uh, with I-131, a radioactive iodine. And uh, this applied the tail of the thyroid because the tail of the thyroid is difficult to take at surgery uh, because of the location. Uh, and uh, if the tumor <coughs> from the one concentrate I-131, and it is, it is between 50 to uh, uh, between half to two thirds of patients, the type of cancer, uh, papillary follicular cancer, will concentrate radioactive I-131, and that has a major therapeutic value. Uh, th this feature is actually a feature of the thyroid gland. So uh, this papillary and follicular cancer, uh, the way they concentrate the radioactive I-131, same as normal thyroid gland, that means they concentrate the radioactive uh, thi uh, I-131 iodine, that means this radioactive iodine will destroy them and they will disappear from the body. And that's good features. If the patient have those type who able to con concentrate I-131, that's good news. As I mentioned, from a third to half would not concentrate I-131. Uh, so patients, depending on the risk, uh, whether they go for uh, uh, cleaning the thyroid uh, from a, any remaining of thyroid tissue, as well as if uh, there is microscopic cells from those who concentrate I-131, this treatment benefit them. So this treatment is given based on the risk factors. Uh, in today's uh, majority of patients get such treatment uh, rather than selecting few patients uh, primarily to clean the thyroid bed from any thyroid tissue uh, for better monitoring those patients in the future. Patients, after such treatment, they given thyroxin because they don't have any more thyroxin, and they giving it with a dose to suppress the thyroid stimulus in the pituitary gland. So the the they want to su suppress the thyroid stimulating hormone because. Uh, the belief that this thyroid stimulating hormone, which is uh, uh, thyroid stimulating, st stimulate thyroid, it also could stimulate cancer to grow. If any cancer uh, cells hidden 
somewhere in the body. So this thyroid stimulating hormone suppression will decrease, will decrease the chance of stimulating cancer. So those patients get slightly higher doses of thyroxine to inhibit or to suppress thyroid stimulating hormone. Why we want to suppress thyroid stimulating hormone? Yes, we like to suppress thyroid stimulating hormone because this thyroid stimulating could be cancer stimulating, could stimulate cancer. So we want to suppress it. In case a few cancer cells will not be stimulated to grow. And that is why we suppress the thyroid stimulating hormone. Once this thyroid stimulating hormone, this patient is monitored and observed for life. And as I mentioned earlier, that those patients do very well. Their life expectancy is norma is similar to parallel control, meaning their life expectancy is the same as if they do not have thyroid cancer. And that's true for those good risk patients, especially if they are younger in age. Thyroid cancer sometimes spread to the lung. When it spread to the lung, the natural history is very long. The tumor could be a few millimeters spread throughout the lung like a snow. But it could take five years to double in size. Could take even much more to double. So they still have good quality of life. Unfortunately, there is no good chemotherapy treatment for those patients. The good news is the course is indolent very slowly growing. What we do normally with those cases, some of those patients, they don't have it so much in the lung. They have it like half a dozen in each lung or slightly more. Those half a dozen, sometimes they grow. Because there is, those patients are not a good candidate for surgery, what we could do? I recently saw a patient with these features. He went all over. He went to France, many institutions, and he was given medications or drugs. Unfortunately, they have side effects, but the tumor continued to grow. So he asked my opinion. I told him surgery is not an option, and unfortunately, there is no drug could help you. This tumor continued to grow. It is true. It, it, the, the, it was in 2004 a few centimeters. Now doubled. The only chance for helping this patient with this metastatic disease is radiation treatment. Surgery is not an option. Drugs is not working. This tumor is growing and ultimately it will destroy the lungs and so on. So the suggestion is to get the biggest ones and treat them with stereotactic body radiation or inserting radioactive high activity C's like I-125. Those will control this disease big time and if the tumor grow we could repeat the same thing in a couple of years. But this treatment could eliminate those nodules and the patient will have good quality of life.